Hey guys, it's Derica with Derica's Designs and today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable little six inch no sew top hat for your Easter wreaths. Grab your glue guns and let's get started. Guys, we are back and we are ready to make this adorable no sew bunny ear top hat. Now I know a lot of you are excited about this one. It is really cute. It's a lot of fun and you can do so much with this. Now in our Wham group, the wreath attachments and more group, we will be making a hat similar to this with the arms and the body and the works. So if you are looking for something more than just the top hat, please consider joining our Wham group. You get a minimum of three full size big attachments every month. And, um, it's just, a, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of learning going on in there. I teach a lot. I talk a lot business wise. There's a whole bunch. So please consider the Wham group if you are enjoying this kit club. Now the Wham group does not include kits. Part of being a Wham member is learning how to go to the stores and purchase the items yourself because you can't be a successful attachment maker if you don't know how to buy fabric, right? You have to know how to do the things. <laughs> so uh, my WAM members know that I'm you know, particular about that. I'm like, yeah, I want you to go out and buy what you want, not just what I send you, all righty? Okay, so this is made entirely on EVC foam and we have a five millimeter foam. This is the thicker one. They sell it at Hobby Lobby. It's usually on the bottom shelves of the foam rack. And then these are the two millimeter foams. These are incredibly thin. They don't have a lot of stability. If if it being too thin is an issue for you, then double up on it. See how you can squeeze this? It's very soft. Um, it usually bounces right back into shape. I mean, most of the time, I don't, I've never, I did have one that it crushed in this corner right here and it was, it had messed up the fabric and stuff so bad that all I could do, I had to throw it away and start over. But that's a rarity. That's, you know, somebody kicking your package down the driveway kind of thing. So let's get started with our top hat. There's lots of pieces. We have the brim. We have the inside of the ears. We have, I, I don't know what this is called. I just call it the base because I don't know. It's just the, the base. I don't know. This is a piece for the top and this is the second piece for the brim. And we only use this when we add the ears. Normally you don't need the second piece. This is a two millimeter piece. So for the brim, the bottom, you have a five millimeter piece, millimeter piece and a two millimeter piece. And that's just to hold the wire, to hold the ears up. Otherwise these ears have nothing to hold on to. They just flop right over. Okay. And then you have the uh, coordinating fabrics and these fabrics and then all the, the trims and then the wires. I mean, there's just, uh, there's just a lot of stuff. Okay. <laughs> and a little piece of boa. You don't have to put the boa in there. I just, wherever there's an ugly transition where fabric meets fabric and then it's, you can see the fraying, you can see the edges of it. I'd like to put a trim or or boa or something to hide that ugly transition. Just like up here where this fabric meets the top fabric right here on this top corner, it's ugly. So I put a piece of trim around it and if you learn anything from me, it's hide the ugly with trim. Just hide it, just hide all the ugly. Okay, so hopefully you cut your fabric about a half an inch longer on one end. Guys, about you need this. It makes a really nice smooth thing there. So, sorry about that. I got distracted. So you want you want. It doesn't matter which side. Whatever side you want, but one of the sides needs to hang over just a little bit. Okay. So. We are going to, now you don't want gobs of glue on this. And it's very important after you put glue down, that glue stick is empty, that you use the nozzle of your glue gun to spread the glue out. You don't want big glooping globs of glue, okay? Uh, this is very thin cotton fabric. It'll come right through and get you. Now, can you use spray adhesive? Absolutely. Um, I can't, but you guys can, but I'm not going to go outside every time I need to glue something and I can't spray that stuff around my birds. So, you know, it's a, it's like spray paint. It's got all the chemicals in it. So I would never. So anyway, I just do the hot glue. You can do adhesive, no prop spray adhesive, take it outside, spray it, put the fabric on it. 
it holds pretty well. I mean, I've, I've used it in the past. It's just not something I would do on a daily basis. And it also avoids getting, so you can, sometimes you can feel the little beads of blue underneath this, you know, it's, it's not perfect. It's not perfect. Okay. But it still looks really cute. And most people don't complain about, you know, feeling the glue beads underneath it. So now I'm trimming off anywhere that I can see foam sticking through or, you know, just, I just want to trim it a little. We are going to cover this with trim, so it's really not a huge deal. It's just, I guess I'm a little OCD about it. So there we go. So that's glued on. I have one edge that is hanging over just a little bit. Okay. So now we'll glue on our top piece. And when you're gluing a relatively rigid piece to fabric, it's always easier to put glue on the rigid piece and put it on the fabric than vice versa. Just a little, that's still out of the glue stick. I think I would know by now. And I just go around it with lots of little squiggles and lines. And I try to use the nozzle to really spread out the glue. You don't want the glue in huge lines. Set it on there, flip it over. And now you're going to want to use your hands and make sure you pull all the creases out of that fabric. Okay. Just like that. Okay. All right. So we're just going to glue on what we can. This, um, this is the bottom piece for the brim. Same exact thing. Grab it. Set it on there. Now the fabric should be bigger than the piece of foam. I do that on purpose in my patterns. It's so much, it's, it's really hard to line things up perfectly. If you give yourself a little bit of leeway with the fabric, then you're not worrying about it being perfect, you know, and having to line up all the way because you just trim it off. You know, I mean, for me, that is so much easier and so much less stress. So there you go. Put it on there, flip it over, and then just press out all the wrinkles in the fabric while the glue is still warm. It'll also help to press the glue and flatten it out. Okay, so we have our five millimeter piece right here. We have the two millimeter piece of the brim right here. We have a two millimeter piece of the top, and then we have our two millimeter piece of the base. I don't know. If it was a stovepipe top hat, I would call this the stovepipe, but it's not. <laughs> so then what I do, okay, so you want your, your base, you want this extra bit facing you, facing towards you, okay? Whatever side you have it on does not matter. As long as it's, and you're going to roll this up and see, I'm going to grab it from underneath. So my thumb is on top, my fingers are underneath, right? You're going to take glue and you're going to put a line of glue all the way around down there. And then you are going to kind of roll it onto the other. I know it's hard to see, but basically I just rolled it onto the inside of the other side. So you can kind of see here, see how it's, I rolled it in there, right? Just like that. And you might have to do this a couple of times to get the hang of it. So try it a few times before you add glue to it. If you add too much glue, it's going to eke out and it's going to burn your fingers in here. So I usually keep my hand in here to hold it, but I, I know I didn't add a ton of glue, so I know it's not going to burn me. But if you think it might burn you, then you need to get a silicone or something in there. Now I have accidentally had glue seep out at me and it, it does burn. So here's what we're going to do with this extra little flap that we had. Well, first I got to get a dang glue stick because I keep picking it up and I know darn well there's no glue stick in it. All right. So we are going to glue just the fabric, just very lightly go down, go all the way to the edge, very lightly, um, slowly go down. And again, set it down, put your hand in there and push it down. And what that gives you is this very smooth, nice, seam. You don't have a big blunt edge 
from the cut foam. It's very smooth and it's very nice. And that's why I do it that way. And then just kind of poof up the foam, make it round again, because after flattening it, it's probably not real round. It'll kind of bounce back to round. I mean, if you just, and you want to use the top. This is the top. The top is bigger than this as well. That way we can trim around it. it is, there's nothing worse than trying to line this thing up on something that's the exact same size and you're having to move it this way, move it this way, move it this way. Meanwhile, the glue is all cooled off. You can't move it anymore and it's crooked. So I always make my top piece a little bit bigger. Now my brim is the correct, piece, or correct size, but the top piece, I make it a little bit bigger so that you don't have to try to be perfect lining the stinking thing up because it's not that easy. So we're just going to do a bead of hot glue around this. If it drips, put, do it over something so if it drips, it doesn't ruin anything. And you just set this on there. And honestly, it does not, I'm gonna turn it around, hold on. I like my um, Harlequins to all be the same direction. I know, again, OCD, don't, don't judge me. <laughs> Either way, but see how it's bigger? So we're gonna let this cool off and then we're just gonna go around with scissors and trim that off and it's gonna be, and then it's a perfect fit rather than trying to put this, this squeezy little soft top hat onto the perfect size and never, it will never line up, I promise you. Oops, now how many years I've been doing this? It's never lined up perfectly. Okay, so we have some fabric that's just decided to not stick. Okay, I need to set that aside and let that completely cool. And we'll work on our ears. These are no so ears. So you just, okay. So I should tell you, on my ears, they're, they have diagonal bottoms. You'll notice on the pattern. They all, there's a left and a right. Always a left and a right. Um, everything has a left and a right. Even this has a left and it's, it's not as dramatic in the fur, but there is a left and a right because I like the ears to splay outwards, not go straight up in the air. It, it's personal thing. You can cut it straight if you want to. You don't have to. So when you're taking this, you want to put it on the one that is the same direction. And it's pretty easy to tell when you're going the wrong direction. Well, maybe not on that particular picture, but see, you can kind of tell that's that doesn't look right. If you flip it over, it goes with the line of the fur. Okay, thing, but I want this wire underneath this foam because I don't really want it to stand out. So I have about 18 inches of wire approximately. This is a very thin aluminum wire. You can use the green um, floral wire stems. You just have to, you'd have to use two of them, one on each side. Well, usually those are about 18 inches long. I don't know if it would work. I guess we'll see. I don't know. It just needs to be this long. That's all I can tell you. So. What I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of squeeze it into this and get it in there like that. And then what we're going to do is put glue over it. And this glue is going to go over and above and under the wire. So it's going to, it's going, ow, that was hot it's gonna to stick to the fur and to the little piece of foam, okay? And see, and that's, but the only important thing with this is that your two little pieces kind of come out here at the bottom of this, um, ah, <laughs> bottom of the piece of foam, because we're gonna wrap these around it like that, okay? I'm gonna let it cool though. That was really messy, I used a lot of glue, okay. So I'm glad I caught myself because that was one thing, if I had gone too much further, I may not have been able to save it. I might have had to start over. So same thing with this one. Oops, it's not in half. Now you, and honestly, you can use two pipe cleaners. You would have to connect them at the top and then you could use two pipe cleaners to do this. It'd be very flimsy, but once you get them set up in the hat upright, there's really, unless somebody's, you know, grabbing on them, they're not gonna fall over or anything. You know what I mean? Like they're gonna be pretty sturdy. So pipe cleaners could work if that's all you really have. Okay, so I'm making sure this is going on. This has got to be a little bit, oops, I know. 
Getting the wire on here is not always the easiest thing. It doesn't have to be perfect either because it's just wire and it's just in the back and it's just so that you can make the ears poseable if you want to. And to me that, you know, that's a, that's a big benefit, especially if you want to sell these to people who are doing the mannequins, they might want the ears to be, you know, different. Okay, there we go. We're getting there. Okay, back to this one again. Do the same thing we started. We're going to put glue along the edge of the fur and fold it over onto the wire. Okay. And it should just be relatively easy. Put it over. Now at the top up here, you want to fold it over. If there's some that are just not lining up, you can just, but this is going to be the front of your ear. So you want this little area up here to look decent. You don't want there to be a big clump of like bald spot. So like that, and okay. Now this is purely because you guys know I'm a little OCD on this stuff. Sometimes you can pull some of the fur off and sometimes you can't. I'm not cutting all the fur. I'm just, I'm just cutting to the uh, base of the fur. Those scissors don't cut. I should know that by now. Basically, I'm just kind of shaving this top right here. That makes, not all of it, just around this edge. Um, the reason being is I want this opening to kind of be even on both sides because I'm gonna glue this little bit of pink in there, just like that. And we're gonna put trim around it so you won't see the edges. But if you if you shave down just by kind of cutting in just a little bit around the edge like this, um, not don't cut the, the backing of the fur, just basically you're giving the fur a little haircut. And um, then you can get this pink piece to fit in here really easily. So I set it in there. And this makes the inside of the ear kind of, um, it, it's sunken in instead of being glued on top of. You know what I mean? Like if I did two pieces of this white fur and then just glue this pink thing on top, there would be no definition. And once again, if you followed any of my um, past tutorials, I like things to have depth and dimension and layers. Well, by making this pink part sink in like it's going to do right here, you're giving depth and dimension. It's not just two layers of fabric with some felt glued to the outside, okay? Um, and it, 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 it honestly will make a difference in the outcome of your, uh, how it looks. So now I'm, okay, I'm using my left hand for those of you who haven't watched me before. My left hand is holding this, this bottom piece down here. My right um, thumb and forefinger are holding this up so I can put glue on it. That way, when I pull this down, it is exactly where I want it to be. It hasn't moved, it hasn't shifted. So when I lift up, it's exactly there. Now I don't have to do that again. I will show you that again when I do the other ear. It's very important um, for me anyway. I'm not, I don't wanna have to try to figure out where everything goes every single time I move it. Once I get it where I want it, I want it to stay there. And then I glue it down so it doesn't move. Okay, but do you see how, see how it looks like a little boat almost? Like it's like this little cradle kind of thing. To me, that is much more, looks much more like a bunny ear than if I had two pieces of fur glued together with a piece of felt glued on top. The felt on top would, wouldn't have this depth. It wouldn't have this dimension to it. See, so those are the kind of things that I try to, um, you know, stick with here. So we're going to do this one and the things that I want to teach you guys. Um, now, as I learn things, cause guys, I've only been doing this for not even a year in March, it will be a year making no, so items. Anyway, of course I made these top hats forever, but in general, no, so, so I'm still learning too. Like I, there are things that I've done and then I realize there's easier ways and I've had to re reevaluate my my methods and you know change things and I'm learning or sometimes accidentally I'll do something and it'll look way better than the other way I was doing it and I'm like well heck I need to be doing it that way 
So I'm still learning too. Um, I'm learning how to make patterns. I'm learning how to make um, items, you know, that I can, that people want to buy. I don't, guys, I don't, I don't want to waste my time teaching you how to make things that nobody will buy. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> it's a waste of your time, waste of my time. Okay, so here's what I'm talking These three fingers are going to hold that piece down right where I want it. Then these thumb and forefinger are going to hold that up for me. I come over here. I put glue along the edges and then a little bit in the middle. And I'm going to just tack it down where I want it. My, these three fingers are still holding it down so it doesn't slide, right? So there. So I don't, I, I don't put glue on the back of this pink piece, the whole back, and then try to set it down on here. I, you know, there's a good chance I'll mess it up and then I'll get glue in the fur and it's just going to be a mess. And, you know, I'm not about that life. I just, I want it to be clean and neat. All right, so guys, on in your pattern, I don't have a piece of it here with me. It's in the other room. On your um, your brim, I have holes. I have little circles. So when you cut out that pattern, make sure you take an X-Acto or scissors or something and poke through those holes in your pattern so that you can take that piece of paper or um, whatever you're using, set it on top of, well, this one, the, the two millimeter one, and trace those holes onto here so you know exactly where to punch the holes for your ears to make them look like this. Now you can put your ears wherever you want. If you don't like them here, if you want them headed straight out, if you want them more on the sides, if you want them further back, 100% you. But for what I gave you has the holes right here. So use that piece of brim pattern that and it's, it's written on there. I think I wrote it on there and I circled them or something and said, these are for the ear holes. And that's where these wires are gonna go through. So I don't have it. So we are just going to wing it. So, you know, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just trying to make them somewhat even. Guys, there's no, there's no rules to this. You can put your ears wherever you want. Okay. So remember these ears, remember they're, they're, you can set it on the table, set it. So if you, if this one was on the table, it's going to veer off to the left. If this one was set on a table, it's going to veer off to the right. So clearly that's my left and that is my right. Okay. So just set it on your table in front of you and see which way it goes. I mean, like I said, or, you know, that's the easiest way to tell. Okay. So poke these through the holes I just made. It's not happy with me. Oh, you know what? Before we do that, because it's easier, just because it's easier. And I mean, if you, if you want to do it after you can, but I'm going to put the trim on here on the ears. That's all the trim I brought. Okay. I'm going to do this while these can still lay flat. Cause once you put them on the hat, then you have to deal with all the, the hat stuff. So let's go ahead. And, and this is just a pink sequin. Honestly, you, I think black would work in here too. Um, I just happen to have some pink on hand. And I'm just going to go with it. But you guys, you don't even have to do this sequin if you don't want to. You don't need anything around the pink of this ear. I and mean, look at it. It looks adorable. You really don't need anything. I'm just, you know, when I'm making a Harlequin Mad Hatter type thing, I'm thinking, you know, sparkly something. And this is what I could come up with because you can't buy like Easter supplies anywhere. So. Maybe by March, when you guys are getting this, all the Easter stuff will be in the stores and you can go and have your pick of all the cute little trims and all the cute little pom-poms and all that stuff. But let me tell you, in the middle of December, really not finding much. As to be expected. Okay, so there's that one. I hope I have enough. Oops, <laughs> glue gun down. I just dropped it. <laughs> oh gosh, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. I think I'm pulling that cord too tight. We'll move over just a little bit. All right. Okay. 
Now don't, don't press on this sequins with your fingers because the hot glue comes through that little center hole. And it will just cause a million glue strings. So I try not to. I will tap it like into place and then I, that's it. I don't, I don't mess with it any more than that. Believe it or not, I need another glue stick. Okay. And that's another thing, guys. If you're going to be doing these attachments with me every month, you definitely want to invest in some glue sticks. I mean, you can keep buying the bags at Walmart or Hobby Lobby. That's fine. But you're probably going to use a heck of a lot more glue sticks when you're making these. But I mean, I've been through, what, three already of the little ones? Well, they're not even little. They're the 8-inch minis. And then two of the big ones. Or one and a half. I haven't gone through the full two yet. So you use a lot of the glue sticks on each individual piece. It's a lot. So invest in glue sticks. I buy them on Amazon in, in five pound boxes. Or if I'm ever, if I go back to general wholesale, I will get a 50 or a 25 pound box because um, Sandra will sell them to me. And then I do buy the 25 pound boxes on Amazon, but not right now because the price is just about doubled because of, I guess, because of Christmas and crafting. I don't know. So I've just been buying the five pound boxes of AdTech glue sticks and guys, they work perfectly. You don't have to have Gorilla Glue. You don't have to have all that. I have used AdTech or right out of China. What am I doing here? Hold on. Where, this one is bending up on me. I have just used whatever, you know, GSD is usually the company I buy for, which is Glue Sticks Direct. Um, like but right now they're over a hundred dollars for a 25 pound box and not a hundred percent sure why like it's a glue stick people what is I mean is there a shortage or something or are they having a hard time getting it from China I don't know but I I remember buying those boxes for about you know 55 60 dollars every day on Amazon now 100 and I think they were 105 last time I checked so Maybe they'll start going down again. I don't know. Okay, so what I have done is I have fed the wire through and it is, and basically you just want it, this is what's going to, this is what's going to stabilize your ears. Once you glue this down on top of this other piece like that, those wires are going to be stuck in there and they're going to keep your ears upright and allow you to torque on them without them falling out. See, I can just do whatever I want with them. You can bend them in half. You can do whatever, but you, ha you have to have that wire, those wires stuck through. And then when we add glue, that is why we do two pieces for this. I'm going to glue this to that. It's going to sandwich that wire in there and those ears aren't going anywhere. Okay. So now this, these may not match up completely either, but remember we're putting trim around this outside. Okay. It's ugly. Throw some trim on it. <laughs> okay, so I have the back lined up. I'm not gonna worry about the front at the moment. I'm gonna go ahead and glue down this back because you have to do this and just, pe that's why I use this two millimeter on top because you can roll it back, you can fold it. It doesn't need to be super strong. All it's there for is to hold these wires in place so that the ears can bend and they won't, nobody can pull them out accidentally, you know? So now I'm going to pull this whole piece back, like the whole toupee here. And you really want to get glue all the way so that each piece of wire is going to have some glue around it and all the way at the edges. Make sure you get the edges like that. And then you're going to roll it back over. Make sure there's no wire sticking out. Push those wires back in those holes in case one of them came out and then just hold it down. All right, so now we have ears in there and they aren't going anywhere. Now I personally will take my scissors, go around this. Now if, if, if any of it is so off that I think it's gonna make the uh, trim kind of bubble out in, a, in the wrong way, then I will go ahead, oops, I have a little piece of wire poking out right here. Let's see if I can push it in. Let's use my finger now. Push it in and then put a tiny bit of more of, you guys can't even see this. I'm sorry. 
I had it up in my chest. There was a little piece of wire poking out, so I used my fingernail to push it in, and then I just put a little bit more glue over it. Just a little bit of wire. It wasn't... I could have just snipped the wire off, I guess, but it's just as easy to do it that way. So now what I like to do is go around the edges, especially on this top piece, and make sure that there's glue all the way to the edge. When we go to put our trim on, sometimes the trim can push this little edge up, and it will look messy. So, you know, I'm just I'm just pulling up the Harlequin fabric all the way. See how it's see how the right on the edge, there's no, it's not sticking. Just on the edge like this. I'm sorry if my hand is in the way. And then I just go all the way around it. Um, this little area right here is what I was gonna cut off because if I put trim on that, half of the trim is not gonna cover it. So Okay, so I did that to the top. I'm going to do the side too. You just you want them to line up, so don't be too worried about cutting some of it off. If it doesn't look right, cut. And then on the back side, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use my finger, just kind of pull up any area that looks like it might just need a little glue. Um, you may not. Yours may be glued all the way to the edge, and that's fine. But I always find there's always one or two little areas everywhere. One or two little areas that just need just a little bit of glue. That's okay. That's okay. Here, right here. There. Now, if initially, if I had put more glue around the edges, I probably wouldn't have had to do all of that, but it would have been so thick that it would have seeped, seeped through. Is that a word? It would have seeped through the Harlequin fabric, and I don't think it would have looked very good. All right, so I like to put a line of glue right here underneath the ear and like push it down onto it. And that is just to keep this ear attached to the Harlequin fabric. So I just put a line of glue down there and just push the ear down on it. You don't have to, just another one of those things I do. All right, so before I put this on here, I wanna go ahead and put the trim on this top to hide the ugly. See, that's the ugly. I want to hide that. So it's easy. you can put this on and then put the trim on, but then you have to go around the ears. So this is just, you know, uh, years and years of experience. I think if I had to count, I've made well over a thousand of these top hats over the past six years, probably more. I mean, that's just a really rough estimate, but <laughs> I've used every type of, I've used um, chipboard, you know, poster board, the foams, uh, I've used everything possible to make these. And this foam seems to be, I wish it was thicker. When Doris was around, they had a three millimeter. So it was pliable like the two millimeter, but much more sturdy. I loved it. Can't find it anywhere though. I mean, you can find it on Amazon. One piece is like $18.99 for one piece, guys. Make sure you, if you're ordering foam off Amazon, make sure you read because a lot of those people have one piece. You think they show a picture of like six pieces, but you're just getting one. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't get slow. You know, let those people <clears throat> take advantage of you. So I ordered a bunch. I ordered four 12 packs of foam that very clearly in the description and everything said three millimeter. They're thinner than the ones I got from Hobby Lobby, which are two millimeter. And when I, I mean, you could just, just holding them and feeling them, you can tell that they're thinner. So it is a complete deception that they're saying they're three millimeter and they're absolutely not three millimeter. So, you know, be careful. That's why I just send you guys to Hobby Lobby because yeah, it's not the best product, but at least you know what you're getting. You know what you're working with and you're not getting taken advantage of. If, if there's a product out there for attachment making, I've bought it a hundred times over and I will always go back to whatever I think works the best. So I put glue around that bottom. You can't really see it. And then I just kind of eyeballed it. I just kind of got it right in the middle. I mean, the back, see the seam that we made is back here in the back. And then I just kind of eyeball it and put it, you can't push this down hard because it will crease. Let's see, like that. 
And this is why I put the feather boa in here because see your fabric meeting fabric. Sometimes there's little frays, sometimes there's little pieces of strings and stuff, and I don't like that. So I just slide that in there. You don't need to glue it all the way around. It's just a feather boa. Put some glue in the back and then just glue it down. I mean, you can glue it all the way around, but it's not going anywhere. <laughs> so. <clears throat> now, if you have a hole puncher, you could use a hole puncher to put, put holes back here so that you can um, attach pipe cleaners to it, or you could just use your X-Acto knife. Go in like a half an inch by half an inch and make holes, and then your pipe cleaner will go right through those. Just kind of spin it around and make a hole. You don't have to have all the fancy hole puncher things. I have a leather belt, leather belt hole puncher that I've had for years. It's usually what I would use to make the holes, but you can just use an X-Acto knife. It's fine. All right, so all we need to do is add this last piece of trim to this back. I'm going to, this is just standard gimp. The gimp like this, the plain gimp, you can find in the furniture ribbon section, not ribbon, furniture trim section, excuse me. So where the where the furniture fabric is, the ones on the big rolls, there is a section in those, where those big giant, where the, on the wall, like the big rolls, of uh, 12 foot rolls, linear foot fabrics are. Um, and there's a section in there with all these trims that you can buy by the yard for furniture. It's not really, they're, they're very, very dull colored and very furniture-esque, you know. Um, but there's a section that has rolls of gimp, and this is gimp. It's a, it's a great all-around braided um, trim. I think Hank's having a fit out there. And it's, uh, you can get, when all the ribbon is half price and the trims are half price, so is this gimp. So I highly recommend grabbing some in the different colors. There we go, guys. That's our little, a little bunny hat. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you make a bunch of them in all the different fabrics and all the different things and have fun with it, okay? All right, guys, have a great evening. I will speak to you soon. Bye.